Okay, now this is perhaps the most important part of the drawing process, the part where you break down the general shapes and pattern of the face. If this is not relatively accurate, you're going to run into problems along the way. So it's really important to spend as much time as needed to get a good likeness of the model at this stage. Now, um, a lot of people refer to this as the posterized stage, and if you think of like a Jimi Hendrix t-shirt, you know, where you can actually recognize Jimi Hendrix and he's only in black and white shapes, um, you want to think of this stage as something similar to that. So in the first example, I show you how I break down the light shape here in green. Now that is critical to observe that shape as I'm drawing the face. Now that's relatively complex. So in the next examples, I'm going to show you how I break it down more simply. Okay, now I'm going to show you three slides. And in these three samples, I'm going to show you how I've really simplified the face into basic shapes. I've clumped different features into these shapes. So the features of the face, the light and dark pattern of the face is almost irrelevant. I'm only using these patterns in order to create sensible borders from which to establish shapes. So in the first one I've got these blue shapes here. And this is something I'm actually looking at when I'm drawing this, okay? Across the eyebrow, down the side of the face, up to the corner of the lip, corner of the wing of the nose, and back up to the inside of the eyebrow. Now that to me is a simple shape to draw. So if I can just look at the model and visualize that shape, get it accurate, then I've really gotten a lot of mileage in establishing a likeness on the face. And of course you see doing the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, now another example is here in pink. Just the base of the face, a really simple shape to draw. But it tells me a ton about the proportions. It tells me the distance between the eyes and the chin compared to the, the width of the face. It shows me a jawline and, and so on. Now if I were to just isolate this shape, there was no portrait behind it. Almost anyone could copy it relatively accurately. The trick is being able to see these shapes in the model and not be distracted by the form. And uh, that's what takes a lot of practice. But in concept, it's relatively easy. Now, one more example of this is this slide here where we have the forehead highlighted. Now, I've gone clear across from dark to light and isolated the entire forehead shape. Now, this one is really simple and pretty obvious. I think anyone would notice this shape. Now, here is another method of seeing shape, and that is breaking down smaller shape in the figure, or in, in this case, the portrait. The eye sockets are an obvious example of that, the shadow under the nose, and so on. Um, and these shapes are relatively easy to spot, therefore they're a little bit easier to copy than, than other shapes that involve clumping light and dark patterns into one. Okay, and last is um, perhaps one of the most important methods, and that is visualizing shapes inside other shapes. So in slide one here we have the eye socket that is highlighted in red. And what I can do with that is once I establish that eye socket and I'm confident that, that shape is right, I can use that in order to establish proportions in other parts of the face. I can visualize that eye socket down below the mouth in the chin. And if you see, they're relatively close in size. Now, of course, I can do this with a pencil by comparatively measuring the height of the eye to the height down here. But I find that with a little practice, it's, it's relatively simple to visualize these shapes. Just move them with your mind in one place or another and compare their scale. And it's amazing how accurate you can be by doing this technique.
Okay, I've gone a little bit further on the portrait, and I wanted to point out how I'm continuing to use this method of shape comparison in order to refine the proportions of the face and the features of the face. Um, so here is the full image, and I'm going to zoom in on that. And then here in slide one, you can see how I'm breaking down smaller shapes that are a little less obvious, but still there. And they're, they're sh in this case, showing me planes, key planes of the cheeks, and also uh, key shadow shapes, like along the side of the nose. And in slide two, again, breaking down shapes. Now here on the nose, I'm clumping a lot of information together to get that um, sort of uh, distorted triangle shape as well as underneath the nose in order to reestablish the distance between the nose and the lips. I'm looking at that shape there and then clumping the eye into the shadow um, in the orbit of the eye there. Um, now notice that in that shape I'm not really looking at the shape of the eye. I'm more interested in the shape of that shadow of the eye. Okay, the next slide, we got the blue. So now I'm looking at a, a few other options and see how I'm using, I'm clumping shapes in different ways. I'm, and by doing that, um, I'm rechecking my proportion. So in the first slide where I have the pink, I'm using a portion of the shape here that I will in the blue here. And that's okay. In fact, that's good because what I'm doing is reestablishing the proportions by looking at it a little bit differently. All that does is give me a little bit different perspective in order to check my work. And then um, here are a few other examples. The shadow under the nose, uh, the shapes of the portion of portions of the lips and so on. Now again there is this method that I use of putting shapes inside other shapes to judge proportion and uh, in this slide I've highlighted the nose shape the tip of the nose because it's a really clear easy shape to see. Now I move that into different places in the face in order to judge the relative proportions uh, from the nose to the cheek, nose to the eye socket, nose to the jawline and so on. Um, and that again that what that does is it helps me to avoid having to do a lot of measuring and to be able to see proportion by mere observation it's not to say that I'm not measuring I am measuring but what I'm doing is measuring with my eye by visualizing shapes inside other shapes and again as I've said in earlier it's amazing how accurate you can be by doing this with a little bit of practice <laughs>